I can't believe it's the last episode already. I feel sad knowing that season three is gonna end. It's been so good so far. Chapter 13, Venom of the Red Lotus. Your body will naturally react, forcing you into the Avatar state in an effort to keep you alive. Sadly for you, you'll be entering it for the last time. What do they want? When we dispatch you in the Avatar state, oh. the cycle will end. We will forge a world without kings and queens, where a man's only allegiance is to himself and those he loves. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. I don't know why I didn't see that coming. The Avatar is the ultimate figurehead, the ultimate leader in this world, despite the fact that I don't like the way he's going about things. I do like the idea of us like focusing on ourselves and the ones we love and like maybe by extension community. A lot of us have this idea of like changing the world and using power, like government power, for example, to like save everyone or help everyone. But I think it's worthwhile to take some focus back to oneself. You know, like if you are responsible for yourself and making your own life as good as it can be and like supporting the people around you and helping them be as good as they they can be and having a really strong community. I think that just a natural extension of that is that society as a whole does end up getting better. And I think it happens in a way that's more robust than like any top-down action as I've spoken about at great length before. But it does ignore what seems to be just a, a truth about humanity and society. There does need to be at least some kind of overarching structure to even begin to have the ability to focus on oneself. Like you need to not be in danger of attack every day. You need to have your basic needs met like food and water. And I think the problem is if you're broken up into small factions, a slightly bigger faction can come in and unstabilize the whole thing and so that's why I think humanity tends to coagulate into these large groups and in that sense leadership becomes essential. That being said, given that that is the structure of society, there is something about focus locally first in terms of you and what you can do and where you think change should happen. It has more of an immediate impact than like placing all your vision of progress and future into which leader you elect, for example. But I think that's something that should be changed gradually through like the spread of ideas, like talking about it in this way and thinking about things a little bit differently rather than like destruction. Oh, Janora, coming in clutch once again in another finale. We need you, Janora. We'll find a way out soon. They might not make it that long. Oh no. Cora will come to save us. I think we're gonna have to do this on our own. I mean, I if anyone can do it, if any group of people can do it, it's you guys. Whoa, through the skin. As soon as she's in the Avatar state, take her out. Well, that's a dramatic way to take care of it. Why isn't she staying in the Avatar state? Give it time. She's fighting it. Ah, uh, oh, is messed up. Find the airbenders and my family. I'm not coming out without our children and the rest of your people. Poor Tenzin. I mean, he did he did so much already though, but it still hurts to watch everyone go in and do that and you're left outside when everything for you is at stake. Ah! Fight it. I told you, Cora. Oh no. The world oh, doesn't wow. need you anymore. The time of the Avatar is over, Korra. You're too Whoa. to resist. Let, Let go. go. Let go. Wow. That was awesome. What an intense trip to have. What's interesting is like, she's seeing the pattern between the villains of the past. Seeing all these villains together like this makes me feel like there actually is something credible here. Maybe there is some underlying thing about the Avatar that's flawed and this keeps coming up again and again and again in the show. Last season the whole thing with Vatu, even though that was a negative force for the world, it led to some new step in the process of the spirit world being open and so probably there are more steps to take. Like maybe humanity does have to find a balance on its own without having this kind of correction from the Avatar. Maybe humanity has to find something more stable between people and nations and that is a trajectory that we see in the show. It's just happening very very slowly and gradually. <laughs> Nice. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Oh, my. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I mean, you guys have no shot. Yeah, we got the Sami doing something. Oh, honey, I'm so glad you're safe. Me oh. too. I mean, now you're an army, so. Just because I was blown out of the sky and fell hundreds of feet down a cliff, don't you know it takes more than that to get rid of me? Slick. You guys get everyone out of here. I'll search for Korra. I like how all their battle scars are so visible. Like Korra's dad is like worn out, but still going. Fight it. <laughs> Even Zaheer's impressed. Destroy the Avatar. Wow. Yes, there you go. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Hell yeah. That was amazing, but she's still vulnerable. 
Wow, this is like the Aang avatar state where she's just like, lost it. <laughs> we have to help her. You think you're the only one who can fly? You help Korra, we got this. This is round two, right? They, they fought before. But now, Bolin can lava bend. Yes, this is what I wanted, an aerial battle. But also she's maybe slightly weakened, right? Because she has a lot of poison. <gasps> Tenzin! Whoa! Daddy! <gasps> yes. I'll be fine. Just don't fight. Stay put. What are you smiling about? I was just remembering the last time we fought. All right. Not this time, buddy. A lot has changed since then. <laughs> Lava bending battle and flying battle. This is so amazing. Everything, the fight, the music, the style. It's all right, shake it off. <laughs> Did she just hit him with that mountain? <laughs> Oh, the, right, the poison. I can fly up on my bison to help her. You'd never be able to keep up with Sahir. He's too powerful. We have to do something. How can he fly like that? Oh, right, he didn't see it. There haven't been this many airbenders in one place for a long time either. Right. We have power together. That's right. I like how in just a few episodes, or maybe just one episode, they've built up so well that these people are a unit and what they've been through. Really, it was that one episode where they were training. It's perfect. Because now we like know that they're they're solid and we know why they're solid. And interestingly, this is kind of what Zaheer wants. They are their own thing. They're their own agency of people who care about each other. Jinora really earning her tattoos here. You have no water. It's over. Not yet. Oh, you don't have to follow her down there. Final boss form again. <gasps> yes! That was brilliant. I love how everything Bolin does has the same feeling of his character. I'm going down today. You're coming with me! No, don't be stupid. Ah! See, I don't want Gazan or anyone to die here. Ah, oh, what a waste. The Avatar cycle will be over momentarily. There they are. Please hang on. What can they do about the poison? The poison is metallic. Oh, it's mercury, right? I think someone said that. <coughs> Chaos is a natural order of all. Whoa. You see what I did there? I put a sock in it, literally. Oh wow, good one. I do what I do. I mean, he is the hero, Nuktok, after all. That whole sequence. Great. <laughs> it was very good. It was beyond good. It was amazing. Hard to think of many things I've seen in life that are that were that exciting. And I think beyond obviously stellar action and animation and sound and effects, it's that the pieces were built so well. There's no character that feels out of place or a cardboard cutout. I know and love all of them, even the villains to a certain extent. And we know what they can do and we know it's at stake and we know that people can die. And the whole thing is just, it comes together in such an exciting way. It's magnificent. Action is so abundant in shows and movies, but very, very rarely is it earned like, like this show earns it. All fixed up for a formal Avatar appearance. Take a look. It's great. What's wrong? Nobody expects you to bounce back right away. Oh, she's really injured. You need time to heal. But there's something else going on, maybe? She's not looking good. Neither would you if you'd gone through what she had. Even with Sahir locked up again, we still don't know how many Red Lotus members might be out there. That's true, it's a big group. Who will protect us while she's in a wheelchair? Yourselves. Jinora never gave up hope. 
Thanks to her leadership, I see a very bright future. If anyone deserves it, it's Janora. After all she's done the last couple seasons, I was about to make the joke that she should be head airbender. But after Tenzin's last stand, you know, he retains his title as best airbender in my eyes. Of course, there would be no air nation without Avatar Korra. While she recuperates, the air nation will reclaim its nomadic roots and roam the earth. But unlike our ancestors, we will serve people of all nations to restore balance and peace. Wow, that's beautiful. I vow that we will do everything in our power to follow in your footsteps and bring harmony to the world. That's amazing. And again, you know, like it's funny, the villains have a way of being terrible, but also bringing change they want forward in a, in a small way. What Tenzin's saying is that they're not going to rely so heavily on Korra, the Avatar, and instead they're going to put things into their own hands. as individuals and a small tightly knit community. Can you guys think of anything that season one did to that effect? Because season two definitely did, like they implemented something that Unalak wanted, and season three is also influenced somewhat by Zaheer's philosophy, which is really cool. And there's something real about that. Even when things are so polarized, those polarities, they contain elements of truth. Even the most extreme groups, even groups that sound ridiculous that you write off, there's usually something, some glimmer of insight in them. And I think that's the importance of listening openly. Things that gain traction and gain exposure, it's because they hit something. And often there's a lot of other things attached to it and people kind of accept the whole package or reject the whole package. But I think it's worth thinking about. Zaheer has some beauty amidst the craziness, as did Unalak. And I think that's one way society tends to work. It's like we swing between extremes, right? It's a pendulum. It swings to one side, but when it swings back, it doesn't swing back to exactly the same place. It's moved forward a little bit. It's incorporated both sides in the new iteration and so on and so forth. And so there is sort of like a direction to things. And the conflict of this is an essential element of that. And maybe that's how it should be. You know, I don't know. Now, let us anoint the master who will help lead us in our new path. I'm proud of her, but also I love her. I loved her hair. <laughs> it's a special day for the air nomads, air culture. Wow, that was so beautiful. I'm so relieved that nobody died. Well, none of the principal characters died. There were a lot of deaths this season. A lot of deaths. I'm assuming that Gazan and Minghua died. But Gazan's death was sort of on him and was kind of foolish. Although he did die free. It's moving. It's really touching. I love that they're all there for Korra like that. It was a beautiful season for Korra herself. Thinking about the fact that at the start of the season, she was getting so much hate. People were basically blaming her for everything. Yet she still was the most mature Korra that we've seen all series and was willing to sacrifice her life for the greater good and it took a huge toll on her. But the beauty of it was that at the end, everyone kind of sees that and they realize they have to step up for her, which is such a nice way to round out the season. While I have enjoyed all the seasons so far, I understand why this is a lot of people's favorite season and I think there are a bunch of really good reasons for that. One is there's a lot of character development, really cool character development, not only for established characters but for new characters without it feeling uh, rushed. The villains obviously are incredible to listen to and to watch. There are a lot of cool twists in terms of story, deaths, and also powers. And then the last few episodes, it's just like incredible media. It's riveting. Like I've been sweating watching these episodes. There's so much here now. I feel like the show has more tools at its disposal than ever. So I'm really, really looking forward to season four. I know we have some more Korra left, but I want to thank you guys so much for following season three. This has been an absolute privilege to do. And um, I've had so much fun doing it. I've had so much fun hearing your guys' thoughts on it. And I'm really looking forward to closing out this core adventure, sadly, with season four starting tomorrow. <laughs> and also I have to give a very special thank you to all my patrons for allowing uploads to become more frequent. That's got a long way in making these videos come out a little bit faster. And a very special thank you to everyone who joined the Goodman Fruit Squad on Patreon. Special shout out to Anthony B, Alexander Ortega, and Kennedy Weaver. Thanks to you and to all patrons and to all of you for supporting and watching videos and commenting and liking and just generally being so cool. I love you guys and I'll see you guys very soon for season four, episode one.